Hi fairies! In today's video, we'll create a doll together based on the classic story of Alice in Wonderland. This timeless tale is filled with iconic characters and character designs. The Mad Hatter, the White Rabbit, and the Red Queen were unforgettable for my childhood. Additionally, Mattel created many dolls based on these characters in the Ever After High series, which wasn't as popular as Monster High. I loved the flower-faced characters, which continue to inspire my doll creations. We can't overlook the influence of the more recent Disney remake from 2010. The design created for this fairy tale, combined with Tim Burton's unique style, is simply perfect, and I love it. That's why I decided to create the character of the Caterpillar, which doesn't have a specific name, but in the newer adaptation, we know it as Absalem. This blue caterpillar with many arms and legs leisurely smokes its hookah while sitting on a mushroom. This is exactly the image I have in my head when imagining this character. Now let's take a look at the first sketch I created for this doll. You may be familiar with my sketchbook from the previous video. If you haven't seen it, feel free to check it out. Originally, I started with a sketch of a fairy sitting on a bubble. Uh, as a child, I had a book with a similar image. I wanted to work with bubbles primarily. In a creative moment, I completely changed the concept, added bubbles, a hookah, and suddenly it became a caterpillar. I also want to add a magnifying lens to one eye, as in the new version. It should be adorned with various ornaments and hairy parts. I later worked on the design digitally for the color composition. I created several variants, and my Instagram followers could vote for their favorite design number one, one on both sketches. Personally, I leaned towards one or two, which you see on the screen. For this doll, I decided to use a completely new Monster High doll for the first time. In all previous videos, I used old or damaged dolls. It's the first doll I bought at full price just to cut it up. I really like the new models on Monster High, which is the main reason why I've wanted to create a doll from this model for a long time. Let's unpack the entire doll. Since this new version of Laguna Blue is in my personal collection, I have to decide which one to keep and which one to destroy. It took me only an hour and a half and two consultations with my friend because they are by no means the same. In the end, I decided to use the new one. It breaks my heart and I felt like crying the whole time. Now I understand those hate comments on my Instagram about why I do this to those dolls. Now I can undress, shave and cut her. In this video, I want to focus more on the final process, so I won't complicate showing how I processed her. If you want to see in detail how I cut my dolls, watch some of these videos. I plan to keep the hair because I never know when it might come in handy. The new technique they use to attach hair to dolls is interesting. Somehow, they just melt the hair. There isn't as much glue as there used to be. Of course, we'll dip the head into the bath. I chose this model because it's fuller and not as thin as the old Monster High dolls. We'll use hands from an older doll purchased on AliExpress. Then I can proceed with modifying the body. Cutting is a bit more complicated than on the old models, but I can handle it. Specifically for this doll, I ordered hand models with various poses, which are slightly longer, but due to stylization, it won't be noticeable. Since the attached hands are a bit longer, we need to extend the forearms as well. I'll use wire and hot glue for that. These are the prepared hands. Now, I'll start connecting all the cut pieces using hot glue and wire.
After assembling the main parts, I need to create a base to know how to fix all the limbs. In this case, the base is a mushroom which I'll create with wire, hot glue, aluminum foil, and polymer clay. We'll create a structure with wire, wrap it with aluminum foil and hot glue. Then, I'll use polymer clay for filling. It's important to imprint the doll's buttocks into the polymer clay for a secure fit. Later, we might use epoxy sculpt to be able to sand the top of the mushroom. Now I'll attach the remaining hands since I already know where all the hands will be placed. In this case, the base is a mushroom, which I'll create using wire, hot glue, aluminum foil and dry clay. We'll start by crafting a wire structure, wrapping it with aluminum foil and hot glue. Then, we'll use dry clay for filling. It's important to press the doll's bottom into the dry clay so it adheres well. Later, we might use epoxy sculpt to refine the top of the mushroom cap and sand it smooth. Now I'll attach the remaining arms since I already know roughly where all the arms will be positioned. While the material is drying, I'll construct wire ears. First I'll remove the doll's existing ears and then create holes using heated wire. Before fixing the arms, I need to sculpt the body first, pelvis, torso, knees, and shoulders. After applying the material, I'll smooth everything with fingers and water. I'll let it harden overnight and then drill holes in the doll's bottom and the mushroom base so I can seat her. I'll insert intertwined wire into the hole in the doll's bottom and fix it with hot glue. Then I'll continue shaping the ears. Finally, I can fix the arms with super glue. Meanwhile, I'll shape antennae from wire according to my design.
Before inserting them into the head, it's essential to mark where they'll go to ensure symmetry. We don't want crooked antennae. Then I'll fix them with hot glue and shape them with fingers, burning myself in the process. Ouch. Next, I'll fix the arm joints with epoxy sculpt. Now, on to my least favorite part, sanding. I'll start with the head, ears, and antennae, then move on to sanding the body. Here we encounter a problem while sanding the arms because the doll model with six arms was ordered from AliExpress. These arms aren't made of regular plastic, but some sort of rubbery plastic, so they tend to tear during sanding. Ugh. But on the bright side, it's advantageous because they can bend, allowing me to reach difficult spots. Finally, I'll sand the doll with sandpaper. Of course, I'll also sand the mushroom head. To find bumps and poorly sanded areas, we'll coat the entire model with acrylic paint diluted with a lot of water. Now we can see that the belly and torso are well sanded, but there are some imperfections on the bent leg and except for the black parts of the arms that tear, everything looks fine. I'll fix them with sandpaper and then move on to detailing. Phew, it's hard work. And yet, the best part is still painting. I'm starting with sculpting the mushroom using Milliput, which I mentioned in the previous video. I'll sculpt the bottom of the mushroom. If you want to see more detailed steps on how I sculpt the mushroom, you can watch the video on the screen. In this video, we'll primarily focus on sculpting the head and body. I begin with the head by creating thin slices, which I'll use as bands for the antennae. And, uh, voila. Then, I'll start sculpting the torso. I lay down individual strips to create the impression of segmented belly. Next, I'll sculpt the bands again. Once the torso is dry, I can create strips on the sides to accentuate the belly and back. The back will extend throughout the entire body. Then we'll create little shoes like those from Aladdin. We start applying the base acrylic paint. I used several colors to achieve this skin tone. First, we paint each part, applying at least three to four layers and letting it dry thoroughly. It was quite amusing painting around the arms by the leg. It was fun. We'll do the same with the mushroom. But before that, we need to glue it onto a stand using hot glue. For the mushroom, I chose a color combination of burgundy and ochre, inspired by the rosy bonnet mushroom. Once the paint has properly dried, I can start shading with an airbrush. I'll start with applying light edges on the mushroom and then gradually add darker color towards the center of the mushroom cap. Then I'll create all transitions on the doll according to the design. 
It was a very time-consuming process because I had to let each layer dry before applying the next one to ensure a seamless blend. The main problem areas are the folds on the bottom, like the mouth and nose, which were accidentally splashed with green and now need repainting. Now I can start applying individual colors, such as gold for the shoes and bands. Along with them, I'll paint details on the doll. First, I'll create spots on the arms, visually connecting the lower part with the upper one and creating a color transition. Then we'll move on to the rest of the body and paint patterns according to the design. I'll start with a turquoise stripe along the entire body, which will unify the whole design. Then we'll create ornaments. We'll do the same with the head. I still have doubts about the pipe. I don't know whether to make the one I designed or go for the classic water pipe as originally intended. I'll try mine first and then we'll see. Let's draw the face. I want to create a face with large eyes and big irises to give it a somewhat alien appearance and of course red lips as in the design. I'll start with a turquoise watercolor pencil and create the basic shape. Then I'll color them in. I'll draw the eyebrows, trying to create them with fine lines to make them look as natural as possible. I'll start with a light blue and then add dark color at the ends. When we finish drawing, I'll start shading with pan pastels. For the lips, I'll use the same technique as for the eyebrows, fine lines and alternating colors to create texture. Then we'll fill in the intensity with pastel. As the last steps, we'll use acrylic paints and a thin brush for nails to create details. I'll create a reflection on the eyes and lips, a subtle reflection around the eyes and on the eyelids. Once the face is finished, we'll fix it and we can apply acrylic glaze or UV resin on the eyes and lips. For the finishing touches, I also edit eyelashes. Let's give the head a break and I'll start working on the body. Slowly I'll begin uh, shading the arms and the belly. I'll create a subtle blush on the belly and chest and also highlight the individual segments on the belly. Then I can fix the body onto the mushroom base as well as the head. We'll mask the neck with Milan clay and paint it after it hardens. We can create details on the mushroom-like lines on the stem. From now on, the video might be a bit more chaotic because I like to do multiple things at once to give myself space to think. I might also come up with new ideas on how to finish my doll. I'll take 100% acrylic wool and start making the hair.
Once the hair is combed, we'll jump a bit and create a monocle from fine wire, shaping it and fixing it with super glue, then pouring UV resin into the center. Today, I'll also work on the gems for the base so they can dry. While it's night, I've decided to paint the sides of the doll with glowing ink. I'll create a fur around the neck and on the arms using turquoise cotton. I'll attach the pieces around the neck with UV resin. Again, I'm working chaotically, jumping from one thing to another. Now, we'll glue on the created gems, which are already hardened. Then, we'll paint them with acrylic paint and shade them with pastels. We'll apply glue to the remaining surface and sprinkle artificial grass on it. Now I'll slowly start applying the hair. First I'll make the bottom part using twisted strands. Each layer needs to dry thoroughly. While the back part is drying, we can make the front hair. It's a cross-attachment technique, meaning you attach the hair in reverse and flip it after it dries. We'll let each layer dry well before attaching the next one. In the meantime, I'll prepare the elixir. I'm trying to create a potion inspired by the classic drawn cartoon Alice in Wonderland from 1951. For this, I downloaded a template from the internet with the inscription, Drink Me. We'll create a hole in it so we can thread it on a string later. Then we'll cover it with UV resin and let it harden for at least five minutes. Meanwhile, we'll start working on the next layers of hair, which are only short, straight strands to achieve the desired shape, as in the design. To finish all the details according to the design, I'll create a free composition with bubble beads and nylon thread. We'll bond everything with UV resin. For the creation of the elixir, we used UV resin colored with blue pigment and blue glitter. To finish, we'll tie the label around the neck of the bottle. On the head of the mushroom, I'll create water droplets using UV resin to make it look completely fresh. Now we'll just finish the base with various decorative grasses. I'll arrange everything on the base, adjust the hair, lay out various treasures, and then it's time to shoot the showcase. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked the doll, and if you want to decide what doll I'll create next, don't forget to watch my latest video and comment. Good Bay Fairies.